Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Second part of the LCP lesson. Uh, we were going to just expand our answers a little bit today and, and uh, look at how everything in the equation is going to change when you shift left or right. And we're going to graph those changes. So we're not just going to simply end it with shift left and shift right and call it a day. We're going to shift left and shift right and then graph how everything is changing. Short lesson shouldn't be too bad, especially with your understanding from the, from the shifts yesterday. So to start things off, we're going to deal with temperature and we're going to graph um, a temperature change. In this example, we are going to decrease the temperature. And when you decrease the temperature, you are going to remove the heat. And when you remove heat, the system is going to undo that change by making more. So it's going to shift to the left. And when it shifts to the left, the reactants will go up in concentration and the products will go down in concentration. You're going to make more reactants when you shift left. So we can graph that. So here's our graph. I randomly put N2O4 on top and NO2 on the bottom. I randomly said it's at 3 molar and at 2 molar. It really makes no difference. Those numbers, in fact, you'll never draw those numbers on there again. And I'm making this temperature change occur at 2 minutes. And I'm going to say at 4 minutes, equilibrium has regained itself. And here's what it looks like. When I decrease the temperature, equilibrium is going to shift left and make more reactants. So those reactants are going to go up in value. And then at 4 minutes, it's going to start to flatline again. Is that a new equilibrium? Well, when it shifts left and the reactants go up, well, the products have to go down. And the products are going to go down according to this ratio, a 1 to 2. So whatever this height is, that's my 1. NO2 is going to go down twice as much. And at 4 minutes, flat line to be at a new equilibrium. So we can see that at a new equilibrium, after my decrease in temperature, after my shift to the left, I have a little bit more N2O4 and less NO2. And they're going to stay that way until we disrupt them again. Another example is concentration. These graphs are a little bit different because when you change a concentration of something, it's like taking a bucket full of that reactant or product and dumping it in right away. So there's a really sudden change in concentration before the new equilibrium is, um, is formed. And here's what that looks like. You don't have these graphs in your notes. Um, you won't need them after after these next 15, 20 seconds. So if you increase the concentration of something, that individual species will spike up considerably. Then equilibrium shifts, comes back down, and not quite to the original line. It doesn't go back to the original line for a couple specific reasons we'll chat about tomorrow. And if I remove a reactant or product, if I decrease its concentration, it'll spike down, equilibrium will shift, come back up, but not quite to the original line. So let's graph one of these. I'm using the same equilibrium, N2O4, and some heat to NO2. Again, randomly choosing 3 and 1. And it says at 2 minutes, NO2 is injected into the container. Well, if NO2 is injected into the container, it's going to shoot up by some value. I don't know what that value is. It doesn't matter. But then equilibrium is going to shift to undo my change. But it's not going to come back to the original line. You have to draw that dotted line in there. And remember, these things change with that ratio 1 and 2. So this is my 2. It's going down. This thing is going to shift left to undo the change. This is going to go up by a value of 1. So there's my 1, and there's my 2. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. It just, it just has to be close. We can also change uh, the volume and pressure. You notice the word it's total here. When you see the total volume or total pressure, you're thinking to yourself, everything inside that beaker or flask or reaction is being affected the same way. All the substances are going to change the same way. So if I decrease the volume, think of it as an increase in pressure or vice versa. If I increase the volume, um, think of it as a decrease in pressure. Okay, Whatever helps you answer these questions, that's what you want to process. So let's just try a quick question here. So again, I'm randomly choosing three and one. Uh, two minutes, the volume decreased. So if the volume decreased, think of everything in there being compressed. If everything is being compressed, the concentrations are going to go up. But they're going to go up equally because they're both affected by that decrease in volume. Think of it as a 10 liter container being shrunk down to a 3 liter container. Everything inside there has been compressed. So everything is going to have a spike up. Then it's going to shift. So it's going to shift to undo your change. So if I am shrinking the volume of container, it's going to go to the side where there's the least amount of moles of gas. In this case, it's to the left. 
So when it shifts to the left, this is going to increase by a value of 1. That's a horrible line. When it shifts left, this is going to increase by a value of 1. And this is going to decrease by a value of 2. Now, this doesn't matter how... There's no relationship between how much this spikes up and how much it goes down. So you can see after this is settled out, there's a new equilibrium where there's a little bit more N2O4 and a little bit less NO2. So keep in mind, it's shifted because it's undoing its change in volume and pressure. Well, here's an example of where the moles of gas on either side is the same. There's two moles of gas there and two moles of gas there. So when I increase or decrease the volume or pressure, it's not actually going to shift. It can't shift because there isn't a pressure difference on either side. So when I shrink the volume down, everything is going to be more compressed, but there's no shift in equilibrium because it can't actually undo that new increase in pressure. And lastly, catalyst. This is the easy one. Again, 3 and 1 and 2 and 4 on top randomly. If you add a catalyst, all you're doing is increasing the forward and rate forward and reverse reactions. There is no change in anything in regards to equilibrium. No volume, no pressure, no concentration, no temperature. And there is no shift. So if I add a catalyst at two minutes, all I'm going to do is make my reactants and products faster. I'm not actually shifting equilibrium. So there are no changes in equilibrium when I do this. We're going to do a lot of these graphs tomorrow. We're going to work in groups. We're going to get out the whiteboards. You're going to dial all this in. Uh, we'll see everybody tomorrow.